y'all. Welcome to episode four. I feel like we are getting better and better at this the it's more it goes It's been a on. whole month. <laughs> this is the fourth episode. Wow, it is. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun. That's right. That's what they say. So we have a very exciting episode today. Um, we are going to start with the, it's five, five Christmas flavors from Starbucks. We have all of them here. The crazy thing is this morning I went to get the coffee for us and my store did not have peppermint mocha, but the one in Tifton did. So I picked it up on my way down here. So we have five flavors for you. Also, if you like to watch your podcast, we are on YouTube. We are recording a video of us doing this so you can actually see the Starbucks cups and this wonderful sweater. It's adorable. That's it, the first thing I said when I walked in. I'm like, what are you wearing? This is a fashion statement, honey. Okay. Like, first of all, we're going to talk about some Amazon finds. And this is something that you can get on Amazon. It's one size. So I was very nervous about it. It's very hot. I'm about to be sweating oh, in no. a second. But it's so cute. So it has little... I say they're satsumas. I say satsumas. It's probably a tangerine, but they're little satsumas, and it is hilarious. I just feel like they made this sweater for me. They did. I don't know why they made it in bulk. They only needed one, <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> just for Anyways, Lisa. I thought this would be fun to wear on the um, podcast today, and it is actually cold outside. Yeah, it's so freezing. It sort of works. Well, freezing for also, South Georgia. Also, my um, hair is it is yes <laughs> oh my gosh girl if you can see on youtube i put low lights in and i toned down all the blondes so this yes. is the this is the fall, fall hair. look yes yes, yes it yes. looks so good <laughs> oh my gosh i, I can't believe i missed hair. that i love dark hair well i like that it's subtle too mm -hmm. like you know it's like what is up with her like i can't <laughs> Anyway, so yes, you can see all of those lovely features on mm. um, not Amazon, yeah, not Amazon, not Amazon on YouTube. So we are gonna the way we're gonna work this because we have lots of technology around us, even though you can't see it. We are going to test all the flavors, give you our real opinion because we are not sponsored in any way by Starbucks. I wish this is not an ad, <laughs> but we are gonna do a quick commercial break so we can get all of the coffee out of here, and then we're gonna come back. So we're gonna do this first. First, um, before we begin, um, I have a few facts about Starbucks. Hit me with them. Okay, so Starbuck was the name of the first mate on the ship in the novel Moby Dick. And the guys who opened up Starbucks, that was their favorite book. And so they named Starbucks after the ship. Oh, <laughs> That sounds so boring. Imagine going around saying your favorite book is Moby Dick. Also, do you think it really was? Like, do you think some people just say that to be Maybe. like, oh, I'm so smart? <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, if that's your favorite book, more power to you, I guess. Yes. Okay, so also, they have their own coffee farm. No way. I thought that was really cool. In the United States? <laughs> you don't know. I didn't get that far okay. in, in the thing, but um, they do have their own coffee farm and you can take a virtual tour wow. of the farm. You can go to coffeeexperiences.starbucks.com and you can tour the coffee farm. I will be doing that later. I would be willing to bet it's in another country though. Yeah. I don't think we produce coffee I beans here. I don't think so either, other than Hawaii. I think they yeah. produce coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Other tropical places? I don't know. If you go to that website, I'm sure it says on there, um, we need a fact checker. Yes, we Does do. Does anybody want to come volunteer to be <laughs> fact checker I feel like for this Brent podcast. would know. Brent could be our oh, fact 100%. checker. Oh, 100%. Um, okay, and then the last little fact, I thought this was fun, is the first latte was introduced 13 years ago after Starbucks opened in 1971 and the latte today is the most beloved brewed coffee at Starbucks and they didn't even introduce it until wow. after a decade so of who being invented opened. the latte we don't know that either <laughs> Mr. Latte of course okay, for sure <laughs> I'm asking way too many questions this episode Mr. Latte <laughs> I'm sure maybe latte is in the book maybe Dick maybe I've never read it so I don't know <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with caramel brulee latte, I think is how you say Cheers. this. Okay. Talk let's about that see. cup. First of all, yes, these cups are so cute. It's it's kind of blurry on the YouTube channel, but we've got this little cup that they serve in for Christmas, 
And then you have this one, and it has mm. like little Christmas trees and ornaments all over it. Um, so you get two different kind of, what do you call those, patterns when you Adorable. order the to-go. So anyways, um, all right. And Caitlin has cups from my cabinet. So. Yes, because we split them up. We didn't want to be. But ironically enough, one is Bucky's. I'm sure y'all are not surprised. And then the other three are Starbucks cups that you get. It's the free cup that you get. Um, when is that that they do it? Like right before Thanksgiving? I don't oh, know. It's soon. Soon, yeah. It's coming up. So look, at it. it'll tell you on the app if you have it. Maybe by the time this podcast came out, it's already happened. Oh, though. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Well, that would be fun if it <laughs> did because then we are like on trend. Yes. You know? Okay, so caramel brulee latte. I have to say I'm biased because I already know what this one tastes like. Sorry. It's really good. I don't love this one. It's mm. my fiance's favorite, but love it i love it it's good also we just asmr with that gulp i think <laughs> that one's really good i would ra- are we gonna rate them oh yeah let's do that i would rate that one like an 8.5 out of 10 okay that's definitely a 9.5 for me nice that is my favorite one now disclaimer i have never had any of the other flavors Caitlin has. Yeah, You've I've had, had a few. All of them, or I don't think just, so. No. Okay, so I have. That's the only one I've had is caramel brulee latte, and I like wait for that one. So I'm very excited for these next mm-hmm. ones. But that one, I'm gonna give a nine point five because 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 <laughs> I um why am I giving that? Oh, because I feel like I might have a favorite. I don't know. I may have a favorite. You might have one. a new favorite after today. Right. So my favorite is the peppermint mocha. Okay, let's so try So I think that we one. should do that one next. This is the one that my Starbucks did not have, but yes. Caitlin was able to get it. Okay, so peppermint mocha. Okay. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love mint chocolate like anything. Yeah. But not um, that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not ordering that one. I would not <laughs> order that one. Okay. Let's see. What would you rate that one, though? That one's nine gonna... and a half out of ten. Okay. Um, I would say a six. Oh. I'd give it a six. I love peppermint. <laughs> I don't like it together. Fair. Okay. okay. Tristan hates that one, too. So you and Tristan are so on. We have the same, the like, same taste, buds. taste buds. Okay. What's next? do you have uh let's do sugar cookie that oh. one sounds the most fun. this is the one i have a feeling i may like this better than caramel brulee latte so this is sugar cookie latte okay mm. that's pretty good wow the smell yes the smell of this is amazing i can't believe i've never had this one me either that's good also there's like crumbles of something in this because there was like green like glitter or something in it when we opened the top i'm thinking that might be the little crystals yeah that are on top of sugar cookies that is good i would order this again I don't know. Nine out of ten, I think. I'm going to say a nine, too, because I would not say it's better than caramel brulee latte, but I would order this just because that's very good. That is good. It does taste like a sugar cookie in a cup, though. Um, The other one that I have never had is the chestnut praline. Okay, I've never had this. Mmm, okay, but I love nutty stuff, so chestnut praline. It's that's really good, but it's not super powerful like the other flavors. Yeah, it's nutty. It's very nutty and almost like a cinnamon. Mm-hmm. What is that? What is a praline? Is that what a praline is? Oh, I should know because I think it. I think it's something you make <laughs> with pecan. Is it pecan pralines? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. What is, is it? Pecan-y? Okay, fact checker. Um, <laughs> I'd say it's nutty. I don't know about pecan because I think the taste of pecans has like a butter taste. Yeah. And I don't get that. I get a cinnamon taste from this. I wouldn't order this. I would do like <laughs> a 7 out of 10. Yeah. If you don't like a lot of flavor in your coffee, this one's a good one, I think. Yeah, I would say a 7. 7 out of 10 for that. Yeah. I would definitely order again caramel brulee and sugar cookie so far. I okay. this next one is my other favorite. If I don't get the okay. peppermint mocha, I get the toasted white mocha. I feel like I will like this one because I like white chocolate mocha. That's what this is. So what's the toasted though? Maybe something nutty. Yeah. Does it have like a nut? Okay. I don't know. All right, here we go. Good. Solid. 
It does kind of taste like it's been in an oven. Like, <laughs> right? Okay. It does have like a... <laughs> Aluminum foil <laughs> flavor. <laughs> that might not have described that correctly. Yeah, I do feel like it has a toasted... It's different than the white chocolate mocha. When I was a barista, we had something similar, and we used marshmallow with the white mocha. So maybe it's something like that, like a toasted marshmallow flavor. I don't know, Okay, Don't quote me. It definitely is good. I would give this, I would say, an 8 out of 10. Um, I would get the sugar cookie over this one, because I really liked that one. But caramel brulee is still my number one. I know. And so your number one was... Peppermint, peppermint right? you like yeah the, I so you the like the peppermint better than this one i do okay i think if i had the peppermint white mocha i think that i would like that even more oh could you order that probably Is that a secret menu i maybe <laughs> starbucks corporate calling us right now <laughs> right they're like you didn't like my um coffees let us sponsor you these are great they are everyone good. yeah <laughs> No, um, so my top two, caramel brulee latte and sugar cookie. So those are the five Christmas flavors from Starbucks this year. You should be able to get them. Like I said, at mine, the peppermint one was out, but you should be able to get at least four out of the five at any Starbucks, hopefully. Um, And then the little facts that we gave you, uh, don't forget if you want to go virtually tour the coffee farm, it's coffeeexperiences.starbucks.com. So we're going to take a little commercial break and get all of the coffee away from all of the technology, and we'll be right back. Bring joy to the ones you love by sending them a holiday box of farm fresh citrus and pecans right to their front door. Each box is harvested, packed, and shipped straight from our farm. You can even include your own personal message. The box includes six satsumas or navel oranges and one pound of shelled pecans. Visit our website today to order www.rollingbranchfarms.com. We are back. That was a good little break. That was actually really fun, guys. That was, that was amazing. I mean, that was really neat to be able to try different coffees because I would love, I mean, I would not like anything more than to go through the Starbucks drive through get a big old cup of coffee that I've never tried before, and then hate it. Oh. You know what I mean? And those sizes were perfect. They were. For like two people to split like mm-hmm. that. So anyways, now we each have our favorite flavor in our in our cups here. Pep, pep. For the rest of the podcast. Okay, so we the next section that we're going to do today is called Flower Names, Meanings, and Do We Grow That or Not? I found, I think this might be fun to do multiple like later on. Oh yeah, for sure. In the podcast, but we did pick two because... <laughs> they're kind of hard to say. They're hard to say, but also we pronounced the first one <laughs> the wrong way, um, but like we found that out later yep. on. Anyways, I thought this would be a fun little segment um, to do. So it's the flower names, how to pronounce them, and then the meaning behind it. Um, Usually the flower, every type of flower out there has a specific meaning behind it. So if you're into that kind of thing, next time you're, you know, picking out a bouquet or whatever, look up the meaning behind the flower and then that can kind of help you write the card, you know? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so the first flower is, how do we say it correctly? Calendula. Calendula for all of those sophisticated flower oh. farmers. <laughs> so we haven't talked about this yet at all in the podcast, right? No. Okay, because no. we've talked about this, so yes. I was just making sure. <laughs> so I grew up in just outside of Jacksonville, and there was a Calendula Road or whatever drive, and everyone around there calls it Calendula. <laughs> Calendula Boulevard. <laughs> And so I just always thought that's how you say that name, like that word, calendula. And so when I came to start working here, I was already I, sophisticated when you was. when you came to work here. She was. And I said to my coworker, the girl that used to work here, I was talking about the calendula plant that we had. And she was like, you're dumb. Actually, you're dumb. it's called calendula. And it blew my mind. I had no idea. That is hilarious. Okay, so when I first started flower farming, I've got to think back because there were so many. I said the wrong like pronunciation. It's so easy it's, to do. It is. But I as well called it Calendula. 
thought that was the name of it because that is so <laughs> southern of us isn't it, it? Is. <laughs> but also as you know from the introductions I'm from a very small town, and if we had a Calendula Boulevard or road or whatever, I'm pretty sure we would all be pronouncing it Calendula. Calendula <laughs> Boulevard. So that flower is hilarious. I thought that was great um, to put that one in here because yes. we both thought that it was pronounced that way, and then later on, um, growing that particular flower, I came to find out that was not how you said it. So Calendula... It sounds so much more proper. (laughs) It does. Okay, so the leaves and the petals of this plant are edible. So this is one of those flowers, yep, that you will see on dishes in, you know, the high-end restaurants. I mean, I've never seen it on, you know, McDonald's burgers, so I'm pretty sure, like, the (laughs) high-end places are the ones who like to use plants. Um, Let's see, what else does it say? We didn't have much, oh, yeah, we, we did not have much luck growing calendula, Um, the first year that I grew it, it like was crazy. It was tall. It was big. It was beautiful. And then the next two years, it just, I mean, you saw it. It didn't do well this year. It It did not do well. It never, the bloom always came every week, but the stem length was not there. So that flower has been nixed. (laughs) Okay. You will not see that this coming year. You know what? If, if McDonald's had calendula on their menu they would say calendula they would you want calendula with that i drive around (laughs) pull up the next window oh gosh okay (laughs) we have to move on (laughs) um oh so instead of calendula we grow marigolds it's pretty much that you get the the same calendula only comes in orange or yellow well well we do have the um what color was that Sahara, I think was the name of it. It was like red and yeah. Remember the yeah, calendula that we grew this year that didn't get very big? I don't remember what color. Anyways, it, it normally comes in orange or yellow. And so marigolds grow like crazy and they grow great here. So marigolds replaces the calendula as far as this farm goes. <laughs> and the meaning of a calendula is protection or transformation. That's beautiful. So, yeah, I love that. I love that it's protection. I think that's really neat. I don't know where they come up with these meanings, but... Have you ever seen anyone build a bouquet based off their meaning? No. Ooh, maybe that's something we could do. That would be really cool. Yeah. And maybe... You know what? Maybe they do. I don't know if they do, but I think this is a really good idea is look up the flowers in your bouquet and then come up with the name of it Mm. based off of the meaning. Wow. So I may do that this year. That would be awesome. That would be really cool. And then we could just call it that. Yeah. You know, like this one could be the, the protection and transformation (sighs) bouquet. Wow. I think that's That's cool. That's beautiful. I love that. Does someone out there do that? If you do... Yes, please tell us. Yeah, let me know. Because we're not copying because we just came up with it live. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, the next flower. I have never grown this flower. I've never heard of her. Yeah, I have always wanted to get it. I see the plug trays um, when I'm doing plugs. I always see this and then I get nervous because it's a little more expensive than what I normally spend on plugs. And then not only that, I'm just not sure if it's going to grow in this hot weather. That's a beautiful flower. I just looked it up. Yes, oh my it's goodness. so pretty. And it comes in, it's usually that uh, that white and pink okay. color is usually um, what you will get down here in our area. So it's called, I used to call it Godetia. No, wait. Wait, Did I, I think I said it right that time. I think it's maybe Godetia. Godetia is how you say it. I used to say, how did I say it now? Godetia. Godetia mm. is how I used to say it. G O D E T I A. And it's actually Godetia. So I completely bombed that anytime I was talking to anybody because I talked to a lot of pe- a lot of growers about this particular flower, Oops. trying to get information on it, and definitely wasn't calling it Godetia. <laughs> like that doesn't even sound right. But it's a member of the Primrose family. They reseed themselves and they come back year after year. So it's a great cut flower. It's supposed to have a very long stem. We did not make it into the U-Pick. It has not made it into any of the fields. I would really like to grow this flower. So I may try it. It won't be in the U-Pick, but anything that we trial or we try is definitely in the back fields. 
and um, around the grocery store stuff because mm-hmm. we'll just do like a little section of it. So this may be one that I venture off and try this year because I have been like eyeing it for years and now I know how to say it correctly. So everyone wins. <laughs> um, the meaning of Godisha is what? Charm and enthusiasm. I like it because it is charming. Like that's a unique plant right yes. there. I think that would be a cute, um, the charm The The charmed bouquet or something. That's really pretty. We got to do that for real. I know. I like that. I like that idea. Don't nobody take my idea unless you're already doing (laughs) that. Okay. So the last one is not a mispronunciation, but this has become one of my favorite flowers. And the reason, (laughs) yes, it's in your wedding. It's going to be in my wedding. The reason um, it was on my mind when we were coming up with things for this podcast is because I just sat down with my rep and we were talking about all the different things I was going to grow and snap dragons I think I have coming in every single color imaginable they're so versatile they go with anything they transform a bouquet they come in your wedding colors they do they come in valentine colors you'll see them in the valentine bouquets so I'm using them a lot this year I'm so excited they are such a pretty flower and it's so whimsical and different it is it's not like a circular focal it's just like a little like and there's so many different uses for it there's Mm. different varieties so you can get some that have little green balls on the top or you can get some where the flower like blooms all the way to the top. Mm, so they're so pretty. Um, let's see, what else does it say? Oh, I was going to say too, that it also just in the vase by itself, you could just put oh, those in the vase sure. and be done with it. Like we did so that pretty. as a giveaway. If you remember at the beginning yes, of the U-Pick, we, did. we yeah. did a Snapdragon giveaway because they were just so abundant and beautiful. Yes. People loved it. And our second wave didn't come in until towards the end. Yeah. And now they're out there blooming. Looking so good. It's the only thing it out is. there. It is. It is. <laughs> it's the only thing out there growing. So let's see. Grace and due to its growth in rock areas. It means, oh, it means grace. Oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm like reading off the um, scribble. You the notes. scribble here. So it me its meaning is grace, which I love that. Mm-hmm. Love that. That would be such a pretty name for a bouquet. Grace. grace. Yes, we're doing this. <laughs> we are. Okay, so that's what it means, and the reason why it is called grace is because it grows in rocky areas. Which a lot of plants don't really thrive right. in that climate. But I thought that was so neat that it grows in an environment where flowers should not be able to grow. That's beautiful. And snaps it does. for the snapdragon. Yes, snaps. <laughs> and then it also means strength. So grace and strength. So I thought that was really neat for those two. You know, it is one of the, I feel like the flowers that don't break easily mm. whenever you're stripping the leaves in the field. Yes. A lot of flowers will break instantly. But those stems are strong. Yeah, they're yeah. very strong. I don't have that issue with them. <laughs> also, if you take the um Floret online workshop by from Erin Benzacane. This is one of the flowers that she likes to pick and show you that it's just very simple to harvest <laughs> and shred the leaves off of because it is a very easy flower to harvest, but not all of the flowers' leaves come off like that. Yeah, so. no, a lot of them are very difficult. But on the Snapdragons, it's very easy, so it makes sense as to why you would use that for the video. Yes. <laughs> so anyways, I love Snapdragons. You should have put her last name as one of these things we don't know how to pronounce because every time I read it, I'm like, I don't know how to say that. I just remember, like, I just, uh, like, in my mind, I think Lada came because, you know, I was a search tech in another life. And Benza Kane. you think of? Benza Kane sounds like some type of, like, medicine to me. So I just remember, like, rhyme it with Lada Kane and you'll you'll be on the right track there. We're getting way too far off here. (laughs) I'm so sorry. Uh, Okay. So our next little section, we figured it was going to take a little bit. So uh, it's called Amazon Finds. And we figured this would be a great time to give you guys some of the Amazon Finds that we either own. I think I own all of mine. Do you own all of yours? No, I did not put anything on this. So stuff we would like to have then or stuff that we own or something we have given as a gift. I have given one of these things as a gift that I do not own. All of the prices on mine, I think, are pretty practical for Christmas. And I tried to come up with things that I would not buy myself. 
So these are things that I would like to receive as a gift. And then Caitlin has things she would like to receive as a gift, right? Yes. And then I think maybe on our next episode, we can kind of break it down. Maybe like men, kids, mm. kind of do like that. Really give you a gift. Yeah, like a gift idea, guide. A yeah, gift guide. I think that would be cool. I own a lot of things from Amazon, first of all. I'm sure most people do. I really don't. I'm not <laughs> don't? there yet. I'm not there yet. Oh, wow. I have so many things. I feel like anytime I need something, I just go to Amazon. Amazon. It does get here very fast, which is awesome. It does. Also, you can get shelled pecans from Rolling Branch Farms on Amazon.com. <laughs> no way. What a good plug. That's my favorite gift on there. <laughs> right? That's, first of all, that is the number one is <laughs> the pecans. Okay. So also, I got this sweater from there. I oh, can link. I'll just adorable. call it. I'll call it the Satsuma sweater. Link it in the show notes, please. <laughs> I will. I will. Okay. So I'll do one and then you do one. Okay, That's how perfect. We'll, okay. So I'm going to start with packing cubes. I thought these were the silliest thing when I first saw them, like, you know, hit social media. And I was like, who is putting stuff in packing cubes? And then one of my friends bought me these packing cubes for my birthday. And let me just tell you, I know why they have all the hype. They are so amazing. So the one that I have is the one that I received as a gift is the one that I linked. It's going to be in the show notes. So this particular packing cube set comes with six packing cubes and it has a bonus um, shoe bag with it. It has three different sizes for laundry pouch. It like zips at the top. There's three different sizes, small, medium, large. And then there's two sizes of the square pouches. And when you put the clothes in there, they expand. Mm. So crazy. And then I have the pink leopard print. You would. Of course. <laughs> These are water resistant. They are foldable, very easy to store when they are not in use. They take up practically no room. They have a mesh top. They're $16.99 on Amazon and the brand is Masio. So I, the way I work this is I put, you know, my like Monday to, I think I could fit four days, like a top and pants. Wow. Um, four days worth in my like large cube. And then obviously, you know, all the other things that you pack can go in all the other um, cubes. But what I like is when I get to where I'm going, I take them out of that cube and then my dirty stuff goes into the the cubes. Yeah. So then if it's in a certain size cube, I know that's dirty. And if it's in like the smaller one, I know that stuff is clean. I just love them. My shoes. So a lot of times my shoes will have like, you know, grass or something mm -hmm. on the bottom of them mm -hmm. and I'll chunk them in there and it'll get the entire suitcase dirty. This um, particular one has the shoe bag and you can stick a pair of shoes in there, which I try not to pack very many pairs of shoes when I'm going somewhere. And so you can put the shoes in there and it can just get that bag dirty and that's it. So love those. They're awesome. $16.99 I think is a great like, Are the price bags point. themselves washable? Yes, they mm. are. They are. And and they're very, I don't even know that you would have to wash them. I have accidentally mm -hmm. thrown them in the washing machine before. But honestly, that material that they're made out of, you could just wipe it oh, clean okay. if you needed to. Yeah. But I have thrown them in my washing machine on accident before. So <laughs> I do know they are washable. The mesh top, I love that because when you open the suitcase, when you get where you're going, you can see, you know, yeah. what's in each little thing. You don't have to unzip it and all of that. But it is um, this particular set that I have. I personally own these, and I think they're amazing. So I will link those, and all of these items will be linked in our show notes. But I think that would be something really fun for your sister, a friend. I mean, really anybody. It's a good price point. And then also, um, it's not something I would buy myself. Yeah, that's you know? true. That's a good gift. Yeah. Um, so for me... My favorite gift I've ever received that I know was from Amazon is, have you ever heard of a squatty potty? Yes, <laughs> I am dead. Yes, girl. Okay. Those are life changing. Okay. okay. And it tucks right underneath your toilet. So when you need to use it, it just slides right out. And it's just a piece of plastic, like a $30 piece of plastic, but it, it changes your, you know, 
Life. Life. <laughs> in so, certain ways. <laughs> fun fact about that, I watched that product on Shark Tank. Did you? That's a Shark Tank product. No way. Yes, it yeah. is. I am a sucker for Shark Tank products. Love though, that like show. Scrub Daddies, of course. Yes. That, <laughs> yes. They. Ha- Maybe we should do that yes. on one of our, a, a lot of the Shark Tank products. But yes, I saw, I can't remember who that was. That presented that product, mm-hmm. but I remember it coming on Shark Tank and, and thinking, now it's legit. Yes, and thinking nobody's buying that, just like that. And I want to say Lori is the one who invested? that invested wow. and got that in. I think Bed Bath and Beyond to begin with. But anyways, we need a fact checker. If you have like a twenty five dollar <laughs> white elephant exchange yes. gift, this is the perfect. That gift is perfect because it's yeah, hilarious. It is and actually useful. Yeah. And it's something that no one else is going to think of to bring to those gift uh, And exchanges. under $30. Yeah. That's great. That's a really good one. That's <laughs> hilarious. I love that. Okay. So my next one is a folding rechargeable makeup mirror. I also saw these all over social media. I did actually buy this one for myself, but... Um, I have gifted it many, many times um, to friends for Ooh. birthdays. Yes. I just opened it. That looks awesome. Yes. Yeah, so it has LED lights. It has the on-off switch. It comes in rose gold. It's very thin, so it fits perfectly in those packing cubes. What? And you can set it up anywhere as long as it's charged. Make sure you charge it. <laughs> that's literally amazing. And that's so good. Only $25. Yes. Yeah, so it's $24.99 and it had a 10% off coupon. The brand was J-B-Y-A-M-U-S. And I'm not sure how you would say that. But like I said, we're going to link this in the show notes. It has three color light settings. So it has that like yellow color and then the like really like white one and then the blue, I think undertone light color anyways these travel mirrors are great it also comes even smaller than this this is the size of an ipad Mm -hmm. if you think about it like an ipad pro yeah it actually comes in the size of the ipad mini and like i said you can stick that in your purse really depending on which size you get and then you could set that up anywhere you know when you're traveling i use it here at my house and then also whenever I travel somewhere but this is a really good gift this would be good for a white elephant it I definitely would it's be cheap practical um also like I said mother-in-law sister niece who else do you buy for <laughs> I don't know I'm not there yet my dog <laughs> your daughter if you have a daughter um this would be something kind of fun you I don't think you could stick it in a stocking, but um, I think this would be something fun to get for a teenager. Yeah, for sure. So my next gift is very basic, but it's on my wedding registry, and this is what I hope I get the most of. Okay. Just Amazon gift cards. Yeah. Just so easy and so versatile because you can buy Rolling Branch Farms pecans. Right. You can buy (laughs) a squatty potty, whatever you need. Yeah. Just the gift card. And they're very, you can use those for anything. I mean, they even have food on Amazon. They have everything. So those are great options for sure. And you can get Amazon gift cards in stores. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, like Dollar General, Mm -hmm. Home Depot, Target. I mean, you can get Amazon gift cards anywhere. So that's a quick grab and go. um, And then you're done. Check it off your list. Okay, so my last item is the throw blanket okay so this is a I don't know if you're familiar with barefoot dreams is that yeah that's the name of it for some reason I was thinking that wasn't it this is a really good dupe of the barefoot dreams blanket that's like Mm. over a hundred dollars oh gosh (laughs) this one is 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 not that much this one is $39.99 the brand is bearberry it is very soft, just like Barefoot Dreams. They have two different sizes, a 50 by 60 and a 51 by 70. I have gifted this. I do not personally own it, but I have asked for it for Christmas this year because I'm, mm. I, I finally want it. And I have always gifted the 51 by 70 because in, when you get that size, I feel like it wraps around your whole body. So it's just like, you know, perfect for you're binge watching something on the couch or whatever. Um, And I love the color, which I always get this color when I gift it out. Stone and cream leopard print. So pretty. It is pretty. I just pulled it up. I love that. Yes, it's so pretty. So that's a great blanket. It won't break the bank. Also something great for a daughter, mother-in-law, cousin, you know, really anybody that you're buying for. I think that's very versatile. And also price point is pretty good. Yeah, no, that's not awful. If you go to 
TJ Maxx or anywhere, you'd be spending more than that. Oh, yeah, true. You would, yeah. So that's some of our Amazon finds. And I think this episode comes out November 28th. Hopefully that's the correct date. We'll see. (laughs) So you still have time if you want to snag any of those gifts. Um, Maybe that will help you with your gift giving this year. (laughs) But we'll try to do like maybe a more detailed gift guide in our next episode where we can kind of break it down for men because I know men are so hard to buy for. Boy, teenage boys, teenage girls are all hard to buy for. So we'll get some items together and maybe... um, what do you call it? Detail it, hone in. Yeah. And I'll make a whole blog post about it that Lisa won't read. <gasps> Fun. <laughs> and, and newsletter. You can say, yes. check our Amazon finds out in the newsletter. I Maybe we should do a storefront. Is that a thing? People. Yeah. Well, you have to have that whole brand thing. It's a oh, whole thing. It's not but that easy. No, I tried to do the storefront. And even though they approved the brand to go like on Amazon, mm-hmm. I haven't been approved for a store yet. So it's really, it's just, it's that's a whole process. very interesting. It is. It's crazy too. Okay. So we are going to go on into our generation gap. A discussion, which I'm, I'm laughing because this is hilarious. Very excited. Also, I'm sweating in the sweater, by the way. This is so hot. It was not a good idea. Not in South Georgia. If you <laughs> live anywhere else, you can buy the this sweater. This would be great. This would be great. But if, if you don't have Satsumas, don't buy it because why are you wearing it? <laughs> it? You know what? I just thought about this. It could come off as mini pumpkins. It could be a little oh, mini pumpkin yeah. sweater. Yeah, it looks like tangerines to me, but I'm yes. I'm saying it's Satsuma. Yes. <laughs> okay, so this is hilarious. It's uh, g- the generation gap, and we decided that this discussion would be about slang words. So Caitlin is 21. Mm-hmm. I'm 37. So she is Gen Z. I'm a millennial. And so this little uh, segment, I guess you would call it, is just um, about different things. I guess how the times have changed. How the times have changed. (laughs) And how they're evolving. They are. Right. Even your kids have some slang words that I've never heard of. They do. And I thought about um, when they, so they will be on the podcast uh, next Monday, which will be, I think, December 5th. Anyways, they will be on that podcast. And for Generation Gap, I want to do the same thing with them because it's going to be totally different. Yes. And it's going to be hilarious. Such a fun insight. I know. Aw. Okay. So my first slang word is... (laughs) I can't even say this without laughing. Booyah. Booyah. If you're listening, I'm sure you're cracking Mm. up. (laughs) I'll be honest, I've never said booyah in my life. Yeah, I can't imagine that you would. (laughs) I can't imagine that you would. So I'm going to use it in a sentence for you. I made an A on my test. So booyah. (laughs) Ooh, that's so weird. I don't even know how else to say it. Hilarious. I used to say booyah all the time. Booyah. Like that was Mm. my... That's in my everyday vocabulary. Isn't it funny though how you have these words and then as you get older, like I don't remember the why like I don't remember the last time I said booyah. Maybe you need to add it back in. Bring it back. <laughs> it's so fetch, Regina. Oh, so fetch. <laughs> what is that on Tuesdays where we wear pink? Wednesdays. Wednesdays. October third. <laughs> Sorry. On Wednesdays we wear pink. Okay, so my next one is the bomb okay the bomb sometimes we would say duh like d-a the bomb or the bomb i would say like the bomb.com yes 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 i think i've said it originated from this yes (laughs) i cannot okay so i thought this was also a funny way to use this in a sentence because well you'll see these birkenstocks are the bomb Okay, Birkenstocks was a huge deal when I was in high school. Yes. So they brought them back. They are back. But we actually got that started in the night. Well, no, wait. I was 99. I was in ninth grade. So this would have been the 2000s. Yeah. 2000, 2001 um, was my sophomore, junior year. Well, 2003 is when I graduated. So I'm well, you know, it's like 99, yeah. 2000, whatever. Anyways, uh, we wore Birkenstocks in high school. We wore them every single day with every single thing. It did not matter what you were wearing. <laughs> I guess it's like the golden gooses. Yeah. Today, yeah. that was our Birkenstocks, okay? So I enjoy Birkenstocks, but mine are like Target stocks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we and had I'm, some off brands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some off brands. <laughs> really love the rubber ones, you know? Mm. Those are the best. It's hilarious that they've brought them back and I don't have a pair. Uh, like, I need to get, go me get a, a pair. pair. Like, come on. Add that to your Amazon list. Oh, yes. I bet they're on there, too. <laughs> I bet. Okay, let's see. What? Oh, this one. 
Uh, so all that and a bag of chips. Okay. I hate this one. Like, okay. <laughs> I feel like it's dramatic. I don't know why. It is so dramatic. Okay. So here it is in a sentence. You are not all that and a bag of chips. So sit down somewhere. We used to say that all the time. All the like, time. Like, what does that even mean, girl? I don't know. Like, all that and a bag of chips. Like, what is a bag of chips? <laughs> like, it's nothing. It's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird, right? It's so weird that that was like, you know, popular. That was a popular <laughs> saying. You are all that in a bag of chips. Or sit down. You're not all that in a bag of chips. Or she thinks she's all that in a bag of chips. I don't get it. I don't get it today. Is that, a, but... is that universal? Or is that just like a Southern thing to say also? Oh, girl, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe. It, it feels very Southern. <laughs> like a Southern woman not cussing. She's just going to be like, well, yeah, you just think you're all that in a bag of chips, don't you? That's true. But That's I don't know. That's true. I don't know because I am from the South. That very well could could be all of these actually now that you say that could be a central georgia thing i have no idea <laughs> but um i just know they were said a lot in the early 2000s so those are my three uh was it three yeah yeah those are my three slang words for the millennials out there <laughs> and for gen zers um i have a few that are hilarious and the first one it's kind of a diss to millennial culture oh it's kind of like I mean, I'm not saying That's if you do hilarious. these things, it's it's okay and I support you, but this is what the okay, the word is chuggy. Chuggy. C H E U G Y. <laughs> chuggy. And a lot it's just used to describe things like monograms <gasps> or chevron print that's definitely a southern thing right the monogram thing oh yeah that's a sure. southern thing yeah yeah but yeah. anything like millennial <gasps> culture would be chuggy did you say chevron yes. like what <laughs> like <gasps> the gingham chuggy. pattern for <gasps> yes like that's a little chuggy i can't i can't and so what is chuggy hold on tell us what chuggy is so it's just uncool <gasps> stuff and it mm-hmm. a lot of times it's just used to describe millennials <laughs> I cannot. not chuggy have, have i told you about this word before or no is this the first time chuggy yeah i don't think i've heard it yeah um <laughs> it's it's real and so it it describes like chevron monogram and just, what else i don't know whatever you would think is like super millennial it's <laughs> chuggy <laughs> Birkenstock. <laughs> well, those are kind of cool now too, I guess. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is hilarious that y'all have words to describe the millennials. Wow. Okay. What's okay. Next? So the next one would be the word stan. I have heard people use this before and I don't know what it means. So basically it just means you're super duper obsessed about something or you like really love it. Like So like I'm stan st- about monograms. No, I stan <laughs> this sweatshirt that your sweater you're wearing. Oh. Like we stan. Like so that's this adorable. Isn't chuggy. <laughs> no. <laughs> not chuggy. <laughs> okay, okay. Chuggy, no. Stan, yes. <laughs> so Stan is like something that you love. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I love that. So it's Stan. I feel like it got started maybe by an m M&M? That's what I was just about to say. I feel like it meant, it used to mean fan. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. By m M&M, yeah. Because I, I did hear that in a song of his. But I've heard like people your age say it, and I'm like, fan? <laughs> but I guess it is. I'm a fan of that. Yeah, I'm a fan shirt of that. Or whatever. But okay, okay. Like okay, so the next one, you probably say this a lot slay. <laughs> oh, yes, I say that all the time. It's, it's all your favorite the word. <laughs> Ochre, period, slay. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I say half of the new words that I say is because of you. Like the, what is it? Period. Period. <laughs> period. <laughs> I use that one a lot because that's hilarious. So this is Slay. Yes. Okay. So we'll use this one in a sentence. Taylor Swift's a new album, Midnight's Slays. Lo- is this the one that just came out? Yes. Because, oh, love it. Do you? Anti-hero. Can. I love Taylor Swift music. Like, love it. Um, Anti-hero, I think, is the one that's. I'm the problem. It's yes, me. Yes. Love that yes. song. Love that song. So yes, that album is slay. Oh, so so slay. it's good. But also people can use this like derogatory. Oh. Like um, it's kind of like a clapback. So if you were like, I love sardines, like, oh, slay, I guess. Like <gasps> whatever. Oh, okay. <laughs> so like um You like monograms? Chuggy, slay, whatever. 
<laughs> well, I was going to say how we used to say all that in a bag of chips. Then yeah. you could be like, slay, I guess. <laughs> Isn't that funny how you can like merge the two? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's crazy. That is crazy. Those were some good slang words. I, I think love so. that. I think so. I'm going to start throwing booyah back in a <laughs> booyah. Like what? Girl. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> all that in a bag of chips. What does that mean? Like. <laughs> A bag of chips is not that big, and it's not that great. It's so. pretty cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty cheap. Comes in lots of flavors. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. We said this oh, is going to be a short episode, We too. did. Here we are. At, <laughs> well, with our Starbucks, it's longer than this. But whatever. We're almost done, We folks. are. Okay, so we're going to move on to name five. This is a little game that... Uh, was in my car. It looks like this if you're on uh, YouTube. It is an actual game. It's just a bunch of cards and you draw them and it gives you categories and then you have to name five things within that category. So we brought that to the podcast and thought that would be fun. So we're just going to go ahead and draw the card, see what our category is, and then we will try to come up with five things. I would just like to say Tristan said this is his favorite part of the podcast is listening to the name five because he's trying to guess too what we're going to say. Well, hey, Tristan, who exists? (laughs) (laughs) And then another person said Moana is PG, not G. Mm. Sorry. I also looked up uh, Hocus Pocus and it was PG-13. That's crazy. I know, I know. Also, that was what, episode one. (laughs) And here we are on episode four (laughs) correcting it. (laughs) Whatever. Okay, um, let's do items of clothing that you can wear in the snow. Okay, I like this. This is kind of Christmas. What about your sweater? <laughs> For sure, because I'm burning up. This is Christmas okay. theme. That's good. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go with earmuffs. That's oh, one. Oh, those are good. Have you actually ever worn any before? <laughs> no. Okay. I, feel I like wear I a beanie. Oh, that's what I'm going to say. Beanie. Okay, yeah. Beanie. I wear the beanie or I wear like the the one that goes around the mm, head and the ears. That's a bit chuggy. Uh, well, I've gone skiing. <laughs> I ski like not all the time, but I've been skiing like four or five times. Mm-hmm. And every time I go skiing, I like to wear that. Oh, yeah. Because if I wear the beanie it thing, pops off. well, my head gets so like sweaty. It's like it like holds heat. <laughs> anyway, quit talking anyway. about sweat this episode. I know. Like I'm sweating this and I feel like it's summertime. Okay. So you said beanie, earmuffs. Oh, scarf. That's a good you one. You would wear that in the snow. Yeah. Okay. Um, Like those blanket scarves. I used to wear them all the time, but now I could not wear a scarf. Me either. Mm. And I have one. I still have one. I got rid of a lot of them because they, they're so like bulky and I'm like. She'd be sweating. (laughs) Sweating again. (laughs) But who, like, we're not wearing that down here. We just don't have the weather for that. We don't have the weather for this sweater. Okay. Like. (laughs) Okay. The next item of clothing, only if you scotch it, right? Or whatever. I would say Uggs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. that millennial culture or is that after you? I'm pretty sure that was after me, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we had... Maybe we did. Maybe I was like 18, 19 when Uggs mm, came out. Okay. Like, I never had a pair and they weren't like popular, I guess, in my like area, mm-hmm. like the Birkenstocks were, but I do know what Uggs are. Yeah. Yeah. And those are definitely winter boots, right? Yeah, they're winter <laughs> boots. Oh, gosh. I can't think of anything else. Um gloves Perfect. I bet people were screaming that out <laughs> like, gloves hello hello yeah definitely waterproof I have a in funny snow. story about gloves can I okay, can I yeah. tell you okay so one time I went to Chicago on vacation Ooh. and we bought gloves because I didn't have a pair and I was in this parking garage and my dad's truck is so big that we I was like sticking my head out the window to make sure we weren't going to like hit any of the signs oh, wow and so I couldn't see so I got out of the truck and was like standing making sure that he wasn't hitting finally we parked and I went in and was looking for my gloves and I couldn't find them okay so I was like dang it like I really just lost my brand new pair of gloves yeah and whatever I just was gonna go without them couldn't find them anywhere maybe I left them at the hotel I don't know so then we're walking out of the parking garage and a homeless man had picked up my gloves because when I got out of the truck they fell out no yes and he was putting them on and I could not say no, no. I just let yeah. him have them yeah I couldn't I could not no I couldn't no 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 I couldn't go up there and be like excuse me those are mine I couldn't Give me do back that my $20 pair of gloves oh. no so I was like you know wow. what good for you I'm glad you were here at the right moment yeah I went and bought another pair. It was I was fun. about to say, did you go buy another pair? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, and definitely waterproof because if you're mm-hmm. in the snow and you have like those, what is that? 
material, whatever that other material is, don't get those. <laughs> that your hands will be wet, they will yep. be cold, and they serve no purpose other than to be fashionable. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so those are our five items for, what is it? Items or clothing to wear in the snow. Okay, so I have the quote for the day, and I decided to do... Do it now because sometimes later becomes never. So this could be really deep or really topical. Like, yes. You know, maybe ne- maybe later never comes. Right. Wow. Or right. you just forget about it and it was something important and you didn't do it. Right. You have to move on. And I, when I thought, when I saw this quote, it made me think about um, like getting started in flowers, yes. which I don't even think we talked about. We have not <laughs> talked hilarious. about that. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> Because I was, oh, 34, 33, 34 when yeah. I first started, I felt like it was too late that um, I should have already been in a career that I was going to be in long term. And the career that I was in, I didn't want to do that long term. And I just I took the leap. So, you know, and did it because if I had not... I mean, I wouldn't be here. Right. We wouldn't be doing this podcast. So anyways, I thought that was a really cool quote to do it now. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can start anything that you set your mind to. So do it now because later becomes never or what you said. Yeah. Never make may, up, may, may, may never not come. come. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have a dream or something that you've always wanted to do, I definitely think you should just jump in and do it. And you can always keep your job. Oh, you know, 100%. like you can keep the job that's bringing in your income and do it on the side and just kind of like meddle in it, you know, if you're too scared to take the full leap. But our, well, my friend from high school, Christy, she has a podcast called Live to Give. And is it the second or third episode is about this very thing? It is. I was, I thought that's what made me, made, made you think about saying uh, this maybe it is because I, I listen to it whenever her episodes come out and she the last episode well when this podcast comes out I have no idea right but you'll have to go back and um, if you like podcasts hers is called live to give and her whole episode is about um, it's just living so out your motivating. dream yes and she actually talks about um, you're not too old because mm-hmm. you know we're the same age and Sometimes you may not have it all figured out by the time you're in your 30s, you know, and it's okay. That's okay because you still have a whole slew of years to live after you turn 30 years old. It's not over, even though lots of us think that it is. It's not. It's not. (laughs) No. And um, I feel like right now in my life, I'm like, I'm so young. I don't know if I want to go to grad school. Like that's always in my dream is to go to grad school Right. right after but I'm like, maybe I should take a break. Maybe I don't need to go because I can always go back. Yes, yes. So You're never too old, especially right now. You graduate in May, May and you'll be... 22. You'll be 22 already. And then, yeah, if you don't go for a year, I mean, you'll only be 23, 23. Yeah. or 24. Or if I don't go for 10 years, I'll only be 32. That's yes. still not old. Yes, that is very, very true. I mean, I went back to school... Let's see, I was 24, 25 when I went back yeah. for Surge Tech and then, you know, started working right after that doing that. So, I mean, I was, I had already thought I was done and in the career and then I was like, I don't want to do this anymore <laughs> and went back to school, which, oh, sorry about that, <laughs> which again, do it now because sometimes later never comes, Yep, you know, like. I um, changed careers in my mid-20s, which was probably not the smartest thing, but it's what I wanted to do, and then changed it again (laughs) when I got into my mid-30s. Do you feel pretty set in your career now? Like, this is what you want to do forever? I think so. It's stressful. It comes with a lot of stress and a lot of uncertainty. Like A lot of managing. (laughs) A lot of managing. There's not you know, a paycheck every two weeks or whatever, Mm -hmm. like, you know, when you're owning something. But I definitely think um, when we have like the UPIC open and people are here and we, we hear their stories and we get their DMs and I don't know, they're just interacting with everything that we do. I think that's what makes it all worth it. Whereas in the past you were just selling to grocery stores. So you never saw the bouquets in people's dining rooms. You didn't know if you were making an impact. It was very kind of depressing. (laughs) (laughs) But now nobody enjoyed it. You know, I wasn't, I didn't allow anybody to enjoy it because I was not confident in what was being put out there, even though it was in a grocery store. I didn't have to see that person. Mm, You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't have to see their reactions and stuff like that. 
So I completely cut that off. And then this year I was like, well, here we go. (laughs) And it's been great. It has been great. People have been so sweet, so nice. Um, we've we've got the best customers, I feel like, that we come do. to the U Pick. So. And even if people have, you know, something negative to say or they had a bad experience, like they're never actually rude about it. Right. They right. offer solutions or they just let us know so that way we and can they make it come better. back. Some they come people back. that yeah have had like you know constructive criticism, which we're definitely open to because we're brand new. Yeah, you know we'd never done anything like that this year, and so we would take some of their considerations, and then they would come back. The and very they next still weekend. post about it, and they yeah. still love their time. So yeah. So our customers are great for sure. But that's going to be it for today. I think it was another long one, but that's okay. Uh, Remember to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a review, rate us. We will have all of our uh, Amazon finds in our show notes that we shared with you today. You can visit our website at www.rollingbranchfarms.com. And you can get a holiday box that includes six satsumas, one pound of pecans. They will start shipping out the week after, well, this week. Because this is posted on November 28th. So this week, uh, the holiday boxes will be shipping out unless you stay otherwise. If you would like for it to be, you know, another week in December, you can always put that in the notes as you're checking out. We have shelled pecan halves, shelled pecan pieces. We have just uh, three pound boxes of satsumas, five pound boxes of satsumas. And then, I'm, well, this, this comes out November 28th. So the farm tea is in. I'm not sure when it will post, but we will have some pictures up of Brent in the t-shirt and me in the t-shirt. So you can kind of see what it looks like on a man and a woman um, and go from there. But we will also have boxes this week on the website that include the farm t-shirt with the pecans and the satsumas. So if you're looking for a holiday gift for, you know, a stepdad, grandpa, like these are great gifts for those, but your boss, or if you're a company and you're looking for gifts for all of your employees, we also offer bulk pricing. You just have to send us a message on our website. So Mm -hmm. I think that's everything that we're selling here at Rolling Branch Farms. Our U-Pick is closed. We um, thank I know. Thank you guys for such a good year. It was very successful with flowers, pecans, everything, but it is now closed and we will see you guys next year on the U-Pick, but we will see you back here on Monday. It will be me and the kids, so that'll be a fun little special episode. Probably will not be long at (laughs) all. So uh, if we don't see you before then, Thanksgiving, oh, Thanksgiving's already passed. So happy holidays. Happy holidays. Go enjoy yourself a Starbucks drink and we'll see you next time. Yes. (laughs) Bye.